This time on Flipping Bangers, we bag a mid-engine 90s sports icon. How has that done 200,000 miles? It's cheap as chips. I'd be delighted to take your 450 pounds. <laughs> and we soon discover just as oily. Looks like it's coming from everywhere, Gus. It's lost its spark. This is where it could all go horribly wrong. And most of its speed. The 173 horsepower of bolted. Is there any money at all in this MR2? No one is looking at our car. I'm Gus Gregory, and he's Will Trickett. Together, we're risking everything to follow a dream. It's something I've wanted to do for a long, long time. We've packed in our day jobs. And invested our own hard-earned cash. We will do whatever it takes. As we try to make a living in the cutthroat world of second-hand cars. It's all in the chase. You've got to buy well, you've got to sell well. Why would anybody buy this car? We've got a goal. We want to double our money. If we put 500 quid in, we need to see a £1,000 back. We're targeting the very bottom of the market. We buy cars that no one else wants. Can we make it flipping bangers? Or is this a gamble we cannot win? It needs so much work doing to it. <laughs>We've invested 10 grand in our new car trading venture. That's to pay for cars. Isn't it great? I know. I've never actually had a proper, clean workshop. No, this is really exciting. And so much stuff. No, I've got my favourite tools in here and my favourite spanners. But if we're to cover the rent on our lovely workshop and pay ourselves wages, the goal is to double our return on every pound we put in. If we can't make money, we lose. So far, the lights are still on, but we've got to keep the cash coming in. This isn't a game. Basically, we've given up a salary, a monthly salary, and replaced it with, well, possibly no salary at all. <laughs> to keep our fledgling business afloat, we must process one car per week, which allows us only five workshop days per project. And talking of that, we need a new one. The Toyota MR2 is a cult, sporty car, but is it for us? Mark 1 MR2 is almost certainly out of the question. Why is that then? Well, I think they're either they're just too expensive or those rear three quarters have rotted away on them. You know what? I'm not actually that keen on the Mark 1. <laughs> you mad? I think the Mark 2 is a little bit of a nan car, actually. Yeah? Yeah. Well, if you get the, you know, the... Oh, the, oh, the, the Beefy one. Yeah. I wonder if our money will be able to afford a fast one. Look, look here, look. You can get them for £1,000, but they look a bit ropey. But ropey is us. We start hunting for a cheap Mark II, and I find a possibility at 595. Most people would be put off by its intergalactic 190,000 miles. To us, it's perfect. Where are we off to, then? This, you've, you've, you've... Got me here in a shroud of secrecy, Gus. Yes. What is it? On the Isle of Thanet. Isn't that where the Russians invaded? Mm, I think it was the Romans. Alan owns the garage, but he's selling it on behalf of uh, this guy, Richard. Alan has been selling local cars to local people for more than 30 years. Alan! Hello there. Hello, I'm Gus. Nice to meet you. Nice to Hello. meet you too. Hello, Alan. Good day. Is, um, is Richard here with the yeah, MR2? Just uh, down there around the corner, messing about on car. Brilliant, thank you. Richard, hello. Gus, pleased to meet you. Gus, hi, Richard, good to see you. <laughs> hi there, Richard, I'm Will. Will, hi, good, good to, see to see you. you. Glad to see two there? people with a sense of humour. Well, <laughs> I mean, what is the story with the car? Well, I bought it about a year ago for my son, who was doing a degree in engineering. And unfortunately, he then discovered the uh, the, the police have speed radars. <laughs> the insurance came up for renewal, and yeah. Fiat Pandas are good as well. <laughs> yes. Well, you yeah. say that, but here it is. It's an MR2, car of the people, mid-engine, two-litre. It was a sort of iconic car of its time. Yeah, incredible cars. Yeah. I, uh, oh, wow, look at that. Very Toyota. I can't understand how that interior has done Nearly 200,000 miles, 191,000 miles. That is a lot of mileage. It is a lot of mileage, yeah. It looks like 10,000 miles, to be honest. Yeah, It I'd really, say. really does. I'd um, say. 
Yeah, that's that's astonishing. It's quite presentable. I can see it's had a bit of paintwork done on this corner here. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's it's there. It's an honest repair. And it's got some damage down and round down onto the back bumper down here. Is that because it's just been reversed into this wall? <laughs> it, it does. It, it looks does look like, like it's been. Can we have a look at the old um, the old engine? Go oh, on. I'll pop it up. Where's the popper? Have you got the popper that side? Uh, yes, no down here. Idea. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's engine not, engines at the back, mate. It's not that one, is no. it? Just a moment. There's there's more levers. Hey, is that it? No, that's not it. That's the, that's the boot. The engine's not that far Where's back. Where's the engine one? In the middle. Uh, Richard, two yeah, bumbling yeah, buffoons. That's quite enough. It's down here. Aha! How has that done nearly? 200,000 miles. I just don't get it. Yeah, it looks like it's done half that mileage or even less. Look at the space. I mean, it's got, th it's effectively got three bonnets. Yes. <laughs> this seem um, clearly a bargain? It, not one of them is big enough to get my set of golf clubs in. Mm, I know. I think it's amazing. The only problem I see yeah. with this car is that a car that's done 191,000 miles has a ceiling, doesn't it? It has a price ceiling. It and really does, the, yes. As the value of the car is dropping and dropping, it's getting closer and closer to the the final destination of all cars, isn't it? Yeah. That's just the way it is. Yes. But it's got a full service history. <laughs> Has it really? Yeah. At £595, this is the cheapest MR2 on the road in Britain. But the niggle that there's no money in the car still remains. Now, it seems we're buying cars just because we like them. Yeah. It yeah. seems that we're buying cars that nobody else would touch. I know. Uh, but is, isn't that what we set out to do? Isn't that... No, that's our thing, isn't we're, it? We're buying cars that nobody else would touch. <laughs> buying cars we feel sorry for. Yes. <laughs> I do like it. I like it as well. It's nice. Yeah. Can we take it for a spin? Help yourself. Hope it starts. <laughs> well, let's... Yeah. Fingers crossed. We should be driving home. The MR2 doesn't have any obvious profit in it, and nothing appears to be wrong. So that's two massive negatives for our business. We've got to find out if the driving manners make us love it more. It's going to be fun. It looks nice. It's, it's so incredibly blue on the inside, it's almost hurting my eyes. But that's how Toyota did it. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with it as well, and we both are. That's the trouble. What, what we're not seeing is we're not seeing the major, the major fault of this car is the fact that it doesn't have any faults. We can't fix it. No. We can't make any money out of it. We're we not going to make any money out of this car. We can't stop its game at all, can we? So mechanically, it sounds and feels great, doesn't it? hasn't got it? a clunk, has it? No, no, not one at all. What's that about? No what? clunks, yeah. no creaks. How old? Whatever, whatever it is with a zillion miles on it, no clubs, no bangs. We can't really miss this one, Gus. This is a good car. This MR2 is honest and true, but really, buying a car with mileage so high doesn't make logical sense. But can we pass? Brilliant, isn't it? It drives great. I love oh, it. Yeah, it's a fabulous little car. We've really enjoyed ourselves. Excellent. We love it. it originally, you had this up for 595, didn't you? Is that right? Uh, yes, although there's a reason behind that. The only numbers that Alan had is a 5 and a 9 and a 5, <laughs> which was the reason why. We were lucky it wasn't 975. <laughs> <laughs> I, st I still think, for us, this car's got a ceiling. It's sort of reached its maximum. Yeah, this is a difficult one, so would you be interested in accepting a, a lower offer? Make an offer and see. OK, well, we'd, we'd like to come in at sort of 450 if that's OK. No, that would be fine. I'd be delighted to take your 450 pounds. <laughs> 450. Thank, Thank you very much. Oh, wicked. No, no, Cheers, that's mate. brilliant, yeah. At 450 pounds, we've got a cracking deal. But with no likely profit in sight, have we landed ourselves another lost leader? And since it's road legal, I decide to drive it rather than trailer it back. It seems to me, after the initial euphoria, of buying an MR2 for under £500, that the 173 horsepower that this car had originally have bolted. We've got to do something, so we've got to be inventive. We're taking it back to the workshop. Uh, Will will have some ideas on it. Um, we'll see. Put our heads together, we'll come up with something really dynamic and really clever, because that's the kind of guys we are. <laughs> the 
The MR2 arrives back in one piece, and it's time to see whether we can keep the excitement for it going. At the moment, it has nothing to upgrade or fix, apart from a general feeling of being too slow. Just feel me a little bit disheartened with it. It's not what I thought it was when we bought it. It's exactly what you wanted. It's a Mark II MR2. Yeah, I wanted the Mark II MR2 model, not the Toyota MR2 no fun model mm. that we've accidentally bought. This is the pinnacle of what we can buy. I don't think there's a better one for the money in the country. I doubt if there is. It's just, you know, it just needs stuff. I mean, it's, it's got no spoiler. It's got an automatic gearbox. Mm. And worst of all, <laughs> it's <laughs> leaking all over it's, it's dribbling. It's dribbling, isn't it? Yeah. It's, not, it's not pouring out. But the oil leak might not be all bad news. Maybe it's connected to the loss of performance. Could it be a chance to make the MR2 a bit faster, worth a bit more money? Before we get busy, I kick off with some pickies for an auction ad which goes up straight away and runs for a week. I'm just doing our online auction for the MR2. So the positives are, it's fabulous inside, great bodywork, it runs well, drives really well. The downside, well, it's got 190,000 miles on the clock, but if I put in here that we've done a complete service, and I think it's got more pluses than minuses, that car, and I, I think it'll go for a thousand pounds. And then, uh, we'll see. the MR2 can now enter its hopefully temporary home. It probably won't stay long. There's pleasingly little wrong with the car. Nice cup of tea for you, Gus. Oh, lovely. Thank you very much, sir. Now, I suspect that you have got a plan for us. Mm. I was thinking there's not much wrong with the car, is there? But what we know is wrong with it, it's it got an oil leak, and um, if we're going to get top money, <laughs> top money for it, we, uh, we need to fix that, don't we? So first things first, let's get the car in the air and have a poke around. Who knows, maybe we'll find even more fun stuff to do. Right, oil leak. Yeah. Oil leak, oil leak, okay, oil so leak. The final position is the two lowest points on the engine. It's where it's actually dripping from, isn't it? Yeah. But it looks like it's coming from everywhere, Gus. So the whole <laughs> engine is leaking oil. So it's yeah. up the front, it's up the back. Very high up on this side, which I can't reach from underneath, we seem to have an oil leak. Yeah. And then down at the bottom, it just seems to be absolutely everywhere. I wonder if it's dripping down there and using the drive shaft as a distribution method, so spraying it all up this side of the engine from there. It does look like it could be that and a bit of wind turbulence under there. It's going to spread it around a lot. Yeah. Do you know, it looks to me like that's coming from the bottom of the distributor. You know where the distributor bolts onto the end of the camshaft? Yeah, yeah. Well, the camshaft's covered in oil and the distributor's dry. More good news. The leak on a 190,000-mile car is actually quite serious. We need to go in from the top, don't we? Don't we do. Think? Yeah, let's get up there and see what we can see. You can't fix a leak until you know where it's coming from. It's really hard to see the source or whether it's a new issue. At least the mid-engine layout of the MR2 has decent access. There, and so, well, there's a distributor, and also there's that other pipe underneath it, isn't there? Yeah. We need to get some access, don't we? Using the miracle of phone technology, we have a slightly better idea of where the leak is coming from. This might determine whether you have a future in photography. Car photography or not. So that's the cap and that's its screw. You can see it's, it's wet with oil. Yeah, it is. All the way underneath. It's coming from the area of the distributor. Will has a rare moment of being correct. Let's pull the cap off and see. And see. So now we have a plan. Pull off the distributor cap and investigate. Look, the bottom of it's all full of, well, full of oil. It might have something to do with why it's not got any power. Yeah, and this cap's absolutely stuffed. 
It's amazing how warm this grocer arm looks. Look yeah. how burnt it is on the end. It's amazing this car ever ran at all. Well, I reckon we get a new new cap. We're going to get some more power out of the car, aren't we? Well, def shadow it definitely, out. yeah. That's where some of the horses have gone. Yeah. The distributor, which sends electrical current into the engine, sits at the end of the camshaft. And there's a seal hidden deep in the engine, which appears to be causing the leak. Before we fiddle with it, I mark the position of the distributor against the block. Right, this is where it could all go. All be wrong. Look, this is definitely our problem. The oil's been coming out past here, past this rubber O-ring, and you can see the oil running down the back of this. So if we put a new O-ring on there, yep. clean it all up, reassemble it all... Yeah, be good. We're away, aren't we? On the bench, I give the distributor a clean. and manhandle off the O-ring, which is the cause of all our pain. Oh, that's off now. We can actually feel it's gone rock hard and you can see it's starting to perish as well. A new one cost pence from the local motor factor. I'm swapping over all the spark plugs and I'll swap over the HT leads as well. How would that going then, Gus? That's all right. This is almost there. We want that new cap. Yeah. And we've got a new rotor arm. Most of these items should be swapped anyway on a freshly bought banger. We've also got a distributor cap. OK, lovely. Plus a set of HT leads. Hopefully, these cheap swaps will reward us with a few more horses. There's one more thing to do, just to sign this job off. Ah, oh, it's brilliant. Do you want that? Oh, yes, please. OK. Good work. Well, there you go. That is that. Done. So leak fixed. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to clean up all that mess from underneath. I think I'll do that now before we go any further. OK. It does go to prove that you quickly get used to and forgive certain issues with cars, like lack of performance. And actually, if you dig in, there's usually something you can do. And that thing I'm going to do is load up with solvent and make the bottom of the engine a thing of beauty. If anybody put this up on a ramp, they'll look at this and they'll think, oh, this is uh, something catastrophic has happened under here. So I'm going to get it all off with some degreaser, a brush. Oh, I've got my science goggles as well, because lots of stuff can fall down when you're doing this. Degreasing the bottom of the car isn't the most glamorous or technical job, but it's a quick and easy way to make the car look loved, and this one needs to. Most people will never do this in the whole lifetime of their car. All done then, Gus? Yes, all done. Do you think that's enough for today? Oh, cool. Yes, definitely, definitely. I can't believe that no one's looked at that oil leak before. It's clearly been leaking a long time, hasn't it? People don't bother with old cars, but this is our opportunity to bring it back a little, isn't it? Yeah, I think if you looked at it now, I mean, who'd buy it with that oil leak? We did. The first day is over, and our apparently faultless MR2 has rewarded us with one chance to improve it. Day two on our Toyota MR2 project. If we finish the induction system, we clean up the induction system, and then we sort out any other gremlins yeah. that the car's got, then we're in good shape, aren't we? Yeah. This car was only £450, which is a bargain, even though it's done an intergalactic 190,000 miles. It seems like nothing was wrong with it, but of course, we soon found enough to keep us busy. We need to double our money, so our challenge is to get it to the £900 mark. Something that I saw when we were <coughs> cleaning underneath the car earlier, there's a, a crack in the gator on the drive shaft here, and uh, you can see that grease is oozing out. Um, it's not an expensive part and it won't take long. It's just something that's got to be done. 
This is critical for the car's health. If you leave it, the shaft underneath and the bearings will get damaged. To get to it, you have to remove the drive shaft. If this was a 100 grand classic icon, I might be tempted to strip and powder coat these arms, but the MR2 gets none of it. And put this in here, like that, and get Will to give us a whack. What do you want hitting? I think this lower suspension arm, don't you? No problem. Okay, are right, you ready? Yep. Okay. Will has not wasted his years of intense study into the black art of hitting things and unleashes his animal brutality on the MR2 suspension. I'm cutting into the rubber boot because it's the fastest way to remove it and there's no part of it that I need to save. I'm wrapping this up because in there, there's three bearings with races and needle rollers in them. And the last thing I want to do is lose anything out of there. If it comes off, that is a world of pain. To replace the boot, I have to beat the drive shaft out. Looks like this one doesn't want to play. Will would love to take over, but he's not getting a look in. And finally, it's out. <sighs> that was our work. <laughs> hey. You'll have to excuse me that it looks a bit like something out of the Crimea, doesn't it? And I do feel a little bit like a uh, field doctor. But I've got to take this off and try and get this off. And I'm absolutely terrified that these needle roller bearings are going to leap out and fall everywhere. So uh, I'm going in. Wish me luck. There it is. <laughs> I'm going to put that away somewhere very safe. I give the spline a bit of a clean up. And I've got a brand spanking boot kit. And that is our CV boot. I thought we'd finished with all the banging, but no. I think that's actually on there now. The retaining clips must be tight, because if not, all the grease, which keeps the bearings lubricated, will be forced out. It needs a good smothering of axle grease. I measure in blobs. One blob should do it. And with a little more wrestling and reattaching of the hub, another job is ticked off. Done. <laughs> And then the wheels go back on, and the MR2 is dropped to the ground. Now it's Will's turn. He wants to unleash yet more horsepower, as usual, without spending too much cash. I'm going to get inside things like the airflow meter and the throttle body and give them a clean-up, because I can see, just by looking in here, they're all full of muck that we don't want in there and I can also see in here that's full of muck as well. If I can get those air components flowing really really nicely it's all gonna help this engine run better. Well that's encouraging. It seems to have an almost brand new filter. Good news eh? This is totally DIY territory. The idea is just lift every lid, unscrew everything that looks safe, and give us a solid clean. I find something that's crying out for TLC. Wow, that is hard. That is so filthy. Look at all of that lot. I'm going to have to scrape that off with a scraper. I give the once over to the air box and the throttle body. Any air leaks may be losing us efficiency. It's amazing. It's also really, really satisfying. Look at this, look, I'm just about to pour. Look at that. Pattern parts are so cheap these days, garages will always replace rather than fix. 
I'd rather tinker with what's on the car, provided it works, because the quality is usually better and it'll fit perfectly. So, a bit of a squirt and a reseat, reconnection of all of the pipes, and that is it. Right then, with everything we've done so far and cleaning out the, uh, the induction system today, it's all coming on really well and we've, we're going to be getting most of the horses back in the stable on this one. But there's one more thing that I think I can do. It's a little trick I've got up my sleeve. There's a mobile service which can remove carbon deposits from the engine. Based on the muck we saw earlier, this is a good idea for the MR2. Hi there. Hello, Warren. Nice to meet you. Hello, Warren. I'm Will. Uh, Warren, here's the keys for the car. Thank you um, very much. Is there anything you need? Um, no, I'm fine. I can just get on and do what I need to do. Cup of tea? Um, love one, please. Thank you very Brilliant. much. Brilliant. Milk, sugar? Uh, milk, no sugar, please. We're good. Got Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Warren connects up his machine to the fuel line, which will move cleaning agents around the engine. It takes 45 minutes and costs about £75 plus VAT. We discovered a few areas of the MR2 where it's been operating under par, and cleaning the inside of the engine is going to give peace of mind to the next owner. Here you are, Warren. Nice cup of tea for you. Thank you very much. So, Warren, I am absolutely intrigued. How does this work? Well, basically, this is a highly refined fuel. It goes into the fuel system, it cleans all the fuel injectors, it cleans the carbon out of the combustion chambers, and it reduces your emissions, and it gives you better fuel economy. Wow! Miracle in a can. That means we're up to £600 on the MR2, as our second day out of five winds to a close. For a car with nothing wrong, we've actually been pretty busy. But what delights will tomorrow bring? Day three out of five, two days left to get the Toyota to a point where it can make us some money. There's no doubt our MR2 is the cheapest in the country, or was, but also the dowdiest, and I'm looking for a breaker who can sell me some body bling to give it an upgrade. Andy? Oh, hi, yeah. Hello, I'm Gus. Oh, pleased to meet you. I've um, come for our MR2 bits we uh, talked about. On the phone, they're down here. I've put them aside for you. Brilliant. Andy from Birmingham breaks all sorts of things and happens to have a single spoiler for an MR2. So much stuff. Yeah, here we go. Aha! There we go. That's it. Brilliant. Oh, that's perfect. They've still got all the fixings on there as well. These are, these are tricky, aren't they? They can break off really easily, can't yeah, they? Yeah, it's lucky they're all there. OK, brilliant. Andy wants £30 for the spoiler and some side trims. Plus, I grab some spotlights for £20. Morning, Gus. Morning. Look what I've got. It's a little bit colour mismatched. I had to get blue little end bits yeah, to go yeah, on here. Yeah, I know, I know. But this, I think that's going to look really cool, isn't that's it? That's going to look super cool, mate. Yeah. That's going to look the business. With this, I, got, I also got a set of um, headlights, big round uh, driving lights. Yeah. Fitting a spoiler is about getting it into the right position before drilling into the body to secure it. That does look great. Doesn't that look brilliant? The manufacturers would have an exact template for the drilling, so the contours of the body fit the spoiler. But we've got masking tape and our judgment. I can see, yeah. No, that's looking all right. I'm going to put one there. OK. Yeah, no, that's good, that's good. Okay. And one here. Once we drill into the body, we commit to a position. Just before I do this, yeah. Yeah. I'd like to just add that... Um, We've got a file. Yeah, uh, add a bigger drill bit. Yeah. And this is our car. Yeah. I've got permission, yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant, yeah. OK. Come on, it's such a lovely thing drilling old oh, cars, isn't God, it? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's infectious. <laughs> it is. My goodness, that looks yeah, very good, that's doesn't it? It's almost going to work, isn't it? It's that's exactly almost, perfect. Almost, almost exactly perfect. No petrol tank, yeah? We fit the other side. And 
And with both edges of the jigsaw in place, we just need to move on and get the large section of the spoiler in. I suppose as long as that back edge is parallel to the back of this. Yeah. Can't actually get it dramatically wrong, can we? No. I thought adding a spoiler would be simple, but actually it's very fiddly and easy to get wrong. In hindsight, it would have been quicker to have bought a boot lid with a spoiler already attached. A moment of truth. It's perfectly parallel here. It's perfectly almost perfect this side. Almost perfect. That's that, amazing. Yeah. There's no point bolting it down, is there? Uh, no, they Until need we... painting. Well, should we get on with the front, then? We say that's done, and we'll get on and put those driving lights in. Here you go. Oh, ha, right. This is going to be quite exciting, isn't it? I think, no, right in the centre. It looked like a cyclops. We can't have them there. <laughs> so I'm thinking there. That happens to be a nice bit of steel work with the N8 fixing in. Yeah. That I think I can make a nice bracket for, and it would end up being there. They're going to look brilliant. Good. So we whip off the headlight covers to locate the wiring connections. I just need to find which connections in the lighting circuit correspond to main beam, and then we're in business. While I take care of that, Will's gnarly fingers are busy sketching out a design for a lamp bracket to get our oversized spotlights in place. I need to measure carefully before I start making the S-shaped brackets. So yeah, I've marked up my bit of steel, so I'll need to chop it up into a couple of pieces and bend those bits up and then weld them together afterwards, because I can't make the shape that I'm after in one piece. I'm making new connections to splice into the circuit. If you're going to try this at home, spec out the proper crimpers or pay an auto electrician around £50 an hour to do it for you. So, peeled this back and we know the green and red is our main beam. So, what I need to do is strip this off, tin it and add a bit of, well, I'll use black. And while I do the hard stuff, Will gets to make a mess, cut metal and Massive surprise. This is my best bit. Now that is one happy camper. And with the correct bend and profile, I weld the two bits together. And hopefully, we'll have a usable bracket. Why can't I buy this bracket off the shelf, I hear you ask? Because nobody has ever fitted this particular kind of driving light to their MR2 before. OK, I've just tinned these two wires. I've tinned the trigger wire from the main beam, and I'm uh, linking that now, splicing into it, basically, soldering a wire onto it. Perfect. Then I'll bind that up, and then we've got our trigger. We've got our constant life, we've got our earth, and then we've got a wire going to our driving lights. So we're good. Gus connects the wiring as a pre-install test. Brackets are done. Excellent. Could you um, switch the lights on and give me main beam? Of course I can. Hey, hey, hoorah! But will the brackets do the job? In a few turns of the screwdriver, we'll know. These spotlights aren't the classic look for this car, by the way. We're making a bit of a design statement, and they were cheap. We bolt in the lights, and it's time for a moment of brilliance. Stay there. I'm going to give you the full effect. Well, we have perfect alignment. Are you ready? Yes. Mind your eyes. Ta-da! Way! And off. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, really good job, Gus. That's job well done. Yeah, fab. That's amazing. The car has changed completely now, hasn't it? Yeah, it has completely transformed the whole thing. I'm really pleased. Tomorrow, however... Well, that's another day, that's isn't another it? Day. That's going to be fun tomorrow. We're early doors on day four out of five of our Project MR2 and we have a little issue. We've added some spotlights, added a spoiler, and hopefully made it more powerful. But the internet auction for our little beauty is not going well. No one is looking at our car. And I think it's because it doesn't stand out. The blue, it just blends in. There's hundreds of MR2s for sale on here. 
and ours does not stand out. And it's a good car. In an ideal world, we'd paint the car, but at around £1,000, it's going to make the project financially impossible. We need to find something cheap and transformative and quick too. I've got an idea about vehicle wrap, which is basically coating the car with a giant sticker. Oh, hello. Are you Tiffany? Hi, oh, yes. <laughs> hello, I'm Gus. Nice Pleased to meet, to meet you. you. Um, we spoke on the phone about um, wrapping my little MR2. Yes. And I've rather dangerously watched one of your videos, and I think I might be able to do it. Right, well, I, for a novice, I would recommend this range. Okay. It's the Avery Denison Supreme. It's got a fabulous range of colours. It's got an air-free slide-pull adhesive, which means you it doesn't actually stick until you apply pressure, so you've got all that flexibility oh, okay, with excellent. it. OK, excellent. That's great. So it should make it an awful lot easier than it would be otherwise. I can see already exactly the colour I need. My MR2 needs to be that colour. So how much do you think we'll need? 10 to 15 metres for a vehicle your size. OK. I think I'll probably take 15, just in case of wastage, maybe. Yes, good idea. OK, brilliant. Good stuff. I'll take it away. Wonderful. Let me go and get that for you. Excellent. Thank you. I've just dropped £250 on a large roll of blue for a £450 car. Am I mad? Before we get wrapping, the car needs another good clean because the blue vinyl will not stick properly if there's muck on the body. We have cleaned cars before, we know what to do. We've never wrapped one, though. Come on. We can't put it off any longer. Let's get it in. It's not quite dry enough yet, Gus. <laughs> According to some last-minute internet research, wrapping looks like good fun and can take anything between two hours and two days per car. We're told that the vinyl is heat-sensitive, so we invest in a heater to warm up the body panel we want to start with. Tape. Brilliant. We've got a fair old learning curve ahead of us, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, should we take some measurements? Can we have some help, please? Now, would you be an absolute star so we can mark a straight edge? Yeah. With the bonnet warm, we need to measure it carefully before cutting the material off the roll. So that's 45 inches. OK. Because that gives us a little bit of spare. Now we glove up. The rule is to measure three times and cut once, but Will finds measuring once seems to work fine. Only joking, Will. And now we start cutting into our nearly priceless roll, knowing if we get it wrong, we really are throwing money away. OK. Uh... And this is where we find out whether wrapping a car is really that simple. OK, then, so... But after some cutting, heating... ..and peeling... Oh, yes! ..it actually looks surprisingly good. And halfway through the first panel, morale is high. We should do that man thing where you, you stand back and look for at least 20 minutes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> we're not going to be, no, be saying this in three hours' no, time. No, we're not, no. A scalpel is essential for trimming, and we order five with the kit. And that's our first panel done. But that was an easy, flat panel. Doing the rest of the car with all its curves is going to really test our new skills. Rewarding, isn't it? <laughs> it's, brilliant. It's, it's like wallpapering without all the hassle of stuff falling off. Once on the car, the wrap is waterproof and surprisingly resistant to knocks and scratches. And if you fall out of love with the colour, you peel it off. Is your heart in your throat? Yeah, because you know that one little slip yeah. makes a mockery of what you've just uh, achieved. That's what it needs. That's it. That's perfect. We're a day into the wrap, and Will even finds time to mask and spray the mirrors. Our progress is better than expected, but the rear spoiler, which we were so proud of fitting earlier, is a pig to wrap. So fed up with that. 
I've just finished this bit. I've had enough, guys. <sighs> just, just go home. Let's knock it on the head and just leave now. Oh! You're knackered. It's the last day in the workshop for our Toyota MR2 project. I was thinking last night, I was so wound up by the, the shapes on the corner of that spoiler. But in yeah. actual fact, you don't have to do it all in one, do you? Mm. And we're desperately trying to stretch it round everything, but if you cut it to shape, yeah. it's just that wallpaper, it's isn't it? Yeah. yeah. We're just learning. We're learning at the moment, that's what it is. Massive learning curve. Oh. We're in the middle of a full body vinyl wrap, which is fiddly and frustrating to do. But even more worrying, the Toyota owes us £750 now, which means that to double our cash on it, we'll need to sell for £1,500. The only way that'll work is if our blue wrap is irresistible to buyers. It's funny, isn't it, Gus? This is the last panel. And this is the first one I've actually sort of doing with confidence, as if we've actually learnt what yeah. we're doing. Yeah. All it needs now is some more meaty wheels, and Will's mate sold him a set for £80. Here we are. Oh, yes. They've got loads of tread on them as well. The wheels look great. Yeah, a bit of a clean-up, yeah. you know, some tyre black on there, we're well away. Yeah, they look great. Right, let's get them in. We managed to sell the old wheels with almost new tyres for £200, so we're up on the deal. That's nearly it for our MR2 refurb, one that we thought would be easy. It's been anything but. The MR2 might have been a bit slow and was Grandad's spec, but at £450, it was too cheap to ignore. It needed TLC, and we fixed the oil leak, flushed the fuel system, replaced leads and service parts, cleaned the internals, added a second-hand spoiler and lights, which were £50, and then topped it off with a bright blue wrap, which was £250 as a trade deal. Was it worth it? Well, this is now this. Including buyback on the wheels, the MR2 owes £750. Isn't that great? <laughs> it's just amazing. <laughs> it looks fabulous in this light, doesn't it? It does, yeah. The only problem is, is it doesn't look great on our advert that isn't this colour. Before we get it dirty, I take some more picks for a new online ad. And what do you do when you've got a bright blue MR2? You drive it. It's so much better now than it was, isn't it? It's in a, so many ways. It's bundled better. I mean, it's, 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 really, it's really pleasing because I got so downhearted <laughs> after buying this car, which was a high and exciting, and we got ourselves a nice little mid-engine sports car. We felt sorry for it. And all <laughs> foul of our own nemesis. <laughs> You were looking for what is essentially a classic MR2. Yeah. You'd want one with the spoiler. Yeah. You'd want one with these wheels on it. Yeah. And you'd want one that at least had a bit of go, even though it's an automatic. At least it's yeah. got its power back, hasn't it? It has, it has. And I'd say it's got a bit of perk back. It's got a bit of zip. It's got that that I wanted. Oh, I genuinely <laughs> think that this is worth £1,500 now. Yeah. Yeah, you could definitely go posing in it if that's what you wanted to do. Well, oh, I feel like I'm posing now. You are? Yeah. It's time to upload the ad. The much nicer car needs a much nicer or higher price. What we've done to it now, the car, it's got to be worth 1500 hasn't it? It was on originally for 1000 It's got to be worth 1500 The car looks fabulous. Try it at 1500 quid. Mm. You, you've got to start somewhere good. I settle on 1495 No offers. The MR2 has been on the market for a day, and we get a bid for the asking price of 1495 It's from James, who used to own the car. He's seen what we've done, and now he wants it back. Ah, James. Hello. Hello. I'm Gus. Pleased nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Hi. Good afternoon, James. Hi. I'm Will. So we're dying to know, this isn't a setup, is it? You are actually coming to buy your car back. Yeah, definitely. It was uh, sold against my will by my dad, and I'm here to reclaim it. 
It sounds slightly malicious, but knowing your dad, it's not, is it? He just wanted it gone. Yeah, just want it out of the way. And now we're desperate to get it off our drive. Here I am. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Full circle. Yeah. We think have thoroughly improved this car. For instance, the flash new colour. What do you reckon to that? I think it's brilliant, actually. That's a definite improvement, I think. Yeah, it was all faded and now it's turn heads. And not only does it look great, we've done stuff to your engine too. We've given it electrical service. We've done a load of decoking in there. We've had a process carried out on the engine to give it back some of the horses that it has lost over the years. So... And it's better, isn't it? It is. It's a load better. It's a lot faster yeah. than it used to be, so careful. So, so what, what have you been driving around in then since your dad sold your car? I've had a Fiat Panda. Ah, so cool. I'm looking forward to getting back into this. Excellent. So you, you bid 14.95, yeah? Yeah. Which is the highest bid we have, mm -hmm. so, and, which is perfect. And we're so pleased Thank you very that much. it's gone back to you. Happy well, to have it. I hope you re-enjoy your car. Yeah. Thank you. And say hello to your dad for us as well. <laughs> we do. Excellent. We'll, Thank you. we'll leave you with it. Bye. Cheers, James. However impossible it seems, we've pretty much doubled our money. We stay in business and a great car gets a new lease of life. Banger flipped.